This is day 13 of the Switching to Linux Challenge, and I've got some big news in this one. So let's start out with the big news. 30 day challenge with Fedora 29, done. I made it to day 12, and then I really wanted to do some DaVinci Resolve and some other things, and the gaming performance was pretty much crap for me as far as when I was loading my Windows-based games. Um, I just wasn't, it just wasn't cutting it. And then I was running into a couple little odds and ends issues with it, such as uh, the sleep mode, or as, let's say my monitors decided to shut off and go to sleep. A lot of times my system would lock up. And there's a couple little things like this that just kind of nagged at me. It wasn't perfect. And I was like, okay, I'm done. So Fedora 29, I kicked to the curb. And boy, have I got a story for you. I've gone through a lot of distros in a short amount of time, and I've settled on this one distro after trying a couple different ones, and I'm going to lay that out now. So the first distro I jumped to was CentOS 7 because AMD GPU Drivers Pro works well on it. It's pretty much designed for it, and DaVinci Resolve is basically made for it. So I was like, hey, if I was going to get it to work, it would be in this configuration and I wanted to use DaVinci Resolve. So I went ahead and loaded it up. No dice. I've tried it a lot of different ways as far as the configuration goes, but the end game here, guys, if you're watching this and you have a Vega 64 is Vega 64 plus Linux plus DaVinci Resolve equals bust. You aren't going to get it to work. <laughs> and uh, maybe in the future, a couple down, months down the road, or when CentOS 8 finally launches sometime, uh, maybe that changes. Uh, however, as of today, I would love to hear someone say they actually got that working because I did not. Vega 64 is a very obscure graphics card. It's far newer than almost everything else, and it's just... Uh, the graphic support for it is not great and uh, could get it to work. So I started messing around with CentOS 7. I quickly became disenfranchised with the desktop experience. I'm so used to the server terminal experience that I love that. I could just drop the terminal and do anything. But for my daily driver, CentOS 7 desktop just wasn't going to do it. So I was like, all right, moving on. So the next distro I tried was OpenSUSE, and I jumped right into this OS without any regard or knowing anything about it. Huge mistake. <laughs> the whole thing that turned me on to it was a lot of big Linux guys like Brian Lunduk, um, I think Garner the Linux Gamer on here, he's a big channel. Um, I was like, hey, if these guys are using it, it must be probably the best out there. And it is for some people. And in Linux distributions, just like one of those things. I, I made one video, uh, what's the best Linux? And uh, it's very, very uh, personal experience. And OpenSUSE is great if you are a Linux purist meaning you use all Linux-based programs, use OpenSUSE. It is great. It's backed by SUSE, which is actually a paid subscription, much like Red Hat is. And it is a great system. However, for a novice just getting into Linux like myself, as far as I was getting into it, is using it for my daily desktop experience. Uh, whoa. <laughs> With Yast and, and switching to um, ButterFS, um, wow, it was a huge change from what I was used to and something I was not ready for. If you're going to make the jump to OpenSUSE, um, make sure you read up on it, watch some videos, read the manuals, um, get more well-versed in it because jumping into it, just knowing CentOS and, and you know, uh, 
Debian. I, I've used Ubuntu Server quite a bit in my work. Um, it was not enough. Uh, that was completely lost for the little bit, just getting my drivers going and a lot of other things. And uh, I got it all set up and going, but it was a complete nightmare from someone just jumping in, not knowing anything. Would not recommend uh, it just for a newbie. Now, let's say you've been on a bunch of Linux distros and you use all Linux programs. I think OpenSUSE is the de facto distribution and it is the best. And that's great for those people. So the Brian Lundukes of the world, the Linux Garner Gamer guy that, hey, I'm not going to hate on them at all because there was some fantastic things about that OS. And I'm going to come back and make a separate video about it. But for me, no dice. I'm using a lot of Windows programs. I'm still using a lot of things from that part, which I have to. Uh, at least right now I do. And it was great experience, but I'm not ready for that jump yet. So with those two down, I had to choose one I knew would work for me. And I'm gonna just get a bunch of hate comments about this one. But God, it is just, I love this distribution. I know it's horrible, and many Linux purists absolutely hate this company. And I get that. I, I really do. But I ended up settling on Ubuntu. Alright, throw your tomatoes. Just completely flame me in the comments. I get it. People hate Canonical. Some things they do is very uh, big brothery and just downright anti-Linux. It, it, it comes off at least that way. But... I love their OS. I love everything about it. Um, the stock look of it, I don't like, but I just change that. You know, I modify GNOME quite a bit. I use, uh, if you're interested, I'll go ahead and link up there. Um, I change the, change the entire modification, kind of make it more of a real new age um, Kubuntu type setup, but it uses, you know, Ubuntu stock. So I really, really enjoy Ubuntu mainly because I do a lot of virtualization as far as Windows apps go. It always seems like they run a lot better. Um, my specific hardware, I have a Vega 64, which actually works really well on Ubuntu, almost out of the box. I did install the AMD GPU Pro drivers. Um, again, a very easy installation and it does add more functionality. My system also has uh, a lot of system state or, or you know, going to sleep modes where I was constantly running into issues in some other distros like Fedora 29 and I don't have those issues. It almost just worked great right out of the box. Um, and uh, VirtualBox. Yeah, I really like VirtualBox, and it's really easy to install on Ubuntu, like many other packages out there. So um, it seems like everything's kind of built for it. And it's what I've kind of settled on going forward. I don't know how long I'm going to stay on Ubuntu. I'm probably going to revisit OpenSUSE some more because uh, it's really what all the Linux gurus or whatnot end up on. But it's going to be installed on a secondary drive, and I'm going to be, you know, tri-booting right now. I still have my Fedora on another drive. I currently have, like, five hard drives in my system, so I have a lot of boot choices. But Ubuntu will be my daily driver going forward, at least uh, right now. So I've switched from Fedora 29 as my main boot to Ubuntu. Um, I'm still using Grub, and I've redone that using Grub 2 Customizer, which I'll probably also make a video on. Um, but overall, really, really like an Ubuntu, um, just because of how easy it is to install and customize things. I've even created setup scripts and all these other things in the past, which I can easily, you know, use again. Um, so Ubuntu right now, going forward, is what I'm doing. I'll update you with what's going on as far as what I'm doing. I had a couple of videos I wanted to make um, from a gaming aspect because I know many of you watching load up Steam and use Steam Play and a lot of things. And uh, I want you to have that experience um, of having good performance when you load a game. Uh, Fedora 29, I was loading, I think, Path of Exile and a couple other 
uh, semi-compatible games, and they just ran like trash. It was like a dumpster fire. I just was like, no, you cannot say this is a gold or platinum on wine when it just runs like this, and I have a really good system. So that said, Ubuntu's going forward, my main daily driver, and I'm going to update you all as far as how it's doing for me compared to Fedora 29, which I still can boot into. Uh, it's not like I completely wiped it out, so I can easily load that up and boot back into it. Um, but uh, it's been a day now, I think, on Ubuntu, and it's been great. A lot of things, it's actually just kind of been a sigh of relief. Many users kind of that do the Linux challenge uh, go back into Windows and go, oh, I had a kind of a sigh of relief. I remember a guy kind of telling me that story in the comments section saying, hey, going back into Windows just was like a breath of fresh air. Well, that's kind of how Ubuntu was to me coming from Fedora. A lot of things that just really took me a long time to do in Fedora, it just seems to just work in Ubuntu. That's nice. It's just nice to have stuff work and it just be clean and it just, just goes. So that's my update for today, guys. I'll go ahead and I'm probably going to schedule out, try and do this about a couple times a week. So here, probably midweek, I'll do another update on this switching to Linux series and let you know what's going on with Ubuntu and if I'm thinking about another switch. Uh, I know I was going to do the full 30 days of Fedora, but uh, I just couldn't. It just was bugging me and I just was not having fun in Fedora anymore and I switched. So anyways... Tell the next one. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any feedback or comments, please let me know below. And if you'd like to see more tech videos, hit the subscribe button and check me out on my website, chrystitus.com.